Hey everybody, it's Avi Tenenbaum. This is a short video for first responders and anybody involved in supporting people during highly traumatic events. It's going to be a little bit graphic, so that's my warning to you. I was involved this week in a number of highly traumatic events, terrible things, one after the other, completely unprecedented. Whenever you show up to the scene of a tragedy, there are going to be people who mean really, really well, but have all sorts of ideas that are not in the best interest of the survivors of a trauma. And your job as the professional helper on scene is going to be advocating for the best interests of the survivors on scene. I'm going to give some examples so that you understand what I'm talking about. And I'm saying this also as a mental health professional and also as a first responder in EMS and in law enforcement. Let's say you have a child who drowned in a pool. Parents find him floating in the pool and pull him out. Hopefully they know about how to do CPR, but even if they don't, they call 911 or whoever the ambulance service is, ambulance comes, they do CPR. When they do CPR, you know what a person looks like in CPR. And if you know, you know. It doesn't look pretty. It's not the same as what you look like in your graduation pictures. And the parents are going to be nearby because their child is either dead slash dying or however you want to call it. And they're waiting to see what happens with him if they can resuscitate this set of parents' child back to life. So the parents are sitting and waiting to see what's going to happen to their child. Some well-meaning person is always going to be there who's going to say, don't watch the CPR. Remember your child from what he looked like before he drowned. You don't want to see what he looks like there. Don't go near there. You don't want to watch. Now that person has good intentions. And I understand why they're saying that because a child who's undergoing CPR that itself is a traumatic thing to see. But here's the thing. You have to give people choice. You have to give the parents a choice. So the professional thing would be to go to those parents and say, right now, the paramedics are working on your child. They're doing CPR in the other room. Would you like to go with me now to see it or would you prefer to stay here? You're giving a choice because usually the parents know what's best for them and they'll tell you what's best for them and that's what they should do. Now, if they don't know what to do and they wanna consult with you and hear the different sides, so maybe you can speak out the sides with them, but we don't, you don't choose for them. How dare we block a parent from going into a room to watch CPR if that's what they want to do, it's their child. They wanna see that. Unless, of course, it's such a unique situation where the parent is being violent or doing some sort of thing that can jeopardize the life of the child. And I'm not talking about that, okay? That's extremely rare and, and I'm not talking about that case. I'm talking about a case where a child drowned, simple example, the parents want to watch the CPR. Somebody blocks the doorway and says, don't go in there. You're not going to like what you're going to see. Just stay here. How dare you? Don't do that. Don't do that. Give people choice. This is their child. Okay? It could be the other way as well. A lot of times a parent doesn't want to go in and we force them to go in. You know when this happens the most? After we've pronounced a child dead. Once we declare that a child is deceased, and of course I'm not only talking about children, it could be a parent, it could be anybody, but just for our example. Once we've declared that this child who drowned is deceased, there's always going to be a well-meaning person that will push a parent towards the child and towards the body and say, take a last look at your child before they take him for burial. Or they'll say the opposite. You better not look at your child because he doesn't look good and you should just stay here and re remember what he looked like yesterday. It's not our business. Not only is it not our business, we don't know what's in the best interest of the parents, but the parents do. And it's their decision and they'll live with that decision. Okay? So we have to give them choice and we have to advocate for them to make a choice if other people are trying to steal their choice. Okay? 
This is true in 99% of cases. You know where else this is relevant? When it comes to a funeral. Let's say the child died. So the parents will probably go to the funeral, but you know what always happens? The siblings of that child will be told that they can't go to the funeral. Well, who says that that's right? Maybe the child should go to the funeral. Maybe he'll be forever resentful that he didn't go to the funeral. So what should he do? First of all, look at grief.com, David Kessler's website. I think on the fact page of uh, frequently asked questions, he has a very simple set of guidelines of how to determine uh, children going to a funeral. So check it out. He's a really big expert. But there's no one fits all answer for everybody and everything. But you should give people choice. That's the starting point. Even children, give them a choice. Do you want to go to your sibling's funeral? Yes or no? Once you know that information from the sibling, you can then see what to do about it. Okay? But don't make the decision for people. And especially as first responders, it's not our business to push people in a room or block them from a room. We want to give them choice. That's part of what makes us professional. Part of the definition, very definition of being a professional is that you give people choice. You're not a dictator. You're not a religious figure that says what people must do because of some doctrine that they believe in. You're a professional. A professional works in collaboration with the patient. Aside from that, part of being a professional is you come from a body of knowledge and then pull from your knowledge the best course of action. And we find in the studies that I've read so far, the best thing to do is give people choice. Let them choose. They know best. That's what I know so far. Maybe one day that will change. So far, over and over again, that's the rule of thumb. Very important. This gets into a Another topic that's on my mind because I saw it this week as well, which is do you lie to people? Absolutely not. But I don't want to get into that topic. But let's say you're standing with those parents and they are watching the resuscitation or they're in the other room and you're standing there with them and they want to know what's with the, what's with my son, what's with my daughter, what's going on. And you, and you say to them, it'll be okay, it'll be okay. You know what? It probably won't be okay. The kid just drowned in a pool and he's dead. Resuscitation is taking a dead person and trying to bring them back to life. That's why it's called resuscitation. So don't lie. Don't lie. That's also not professional. I give a 16-hour course on how to handle ourselves in these situations. I'm not going to give the whole course over here, but it's really important. Be professional. Give people choices. Advocate for them to get a choice. Give them the respect that they know what's best for them. Give them that space. We're there to support them. And if they need our help, we'll help them. And if they need information or they want to hear the sides and hear all the different options, we can explain that to them. But at the end of the day, let them make that choice. We should only hear good news.